So we've talked about this unit circle. And I'm going to draw it out here kind of small. I just want to refer to it here a little bit. And remember we said the sine had an angle here. The sine of that angle is the distance from where it intersects the circle down to that reference axis. And that angle, of course, can keep going around and around that circle. What I want to do today is I actually want to graph compared to the angle, the value of the sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at like 30, 60, 90 degrees. These are degrees. 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. Well, if this is at 30 degrees here, the height of this at 30 degrees is 0.5. So let, we know that this does not go above 1 or below negative 1. So we're going to start out at 30 and 0.5 right there. If, it, if the angle is 0, by the way, what's the value of the sine? 0, right? There's no height above that axis at all. Does that make sense? The angle 60, how tall is it? Well, it's 0 0.866. It's somewhere in here. At 90 degrees, what's the value of that sign? 1. So right there. At 120 degrees, what's the value of it? Well, it's 0 0.866 again. At 150 degrees, that's 0.5. At 180 degrees, what's the value of the sine? Zero. If we keep going 210 degrees, it should be negative 0.5. If you're thinking 240, it should be at negative 0.866. At negative 270, negative 1. At 300, negative 0.866. 330, negative 0.5. And at 360, 0. Now I squeeze them together a little bit in the second half of that. But you can see we get this wave and it keeps going. At 390, we're back up to 0 0.5. And at 420, we're back up to 0 0.866. This sine wave, because of its cyclical nature going around and around that circle, will keep on going forever. Now I want to look at some parts of that wave. A lot of your transmission waveforms take on this exact same form. One of the things we wanted to look at is the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from zero to the peak. You guys do this in your like signal testing stuff? Okay. Your wavelength. can actually be measured from any point to the, of the cycle to the next point. That's wavelength. It's a single, well, a single cycle, yes. Um, let's say if I were to have it with multiple cycles like this, a wavelength can be measured at any point in the cycle. So I can go peak to peak wavelength, trough to trough. I can go upside to upside, downside to downside, those all should be the same length. The phase is a little bit tougher. 
The phase describes where in the cycle it begins. All the waves I've drawn so far begin at zero degrees. So they have a zero degree phase shift. The phase is always described in terms of a shift. So none of these have any phase shift, zero phase shift. Related to this, of course, you have frequency. And what is the relationship for frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles per second, yes. And if you do frequency times, you guys use that symbol for wavelength? It's called lambda, the upside down y. Frequency times wavelength times lambda gives you what? The speed or velocity of the wave. So if you got waves moving at the speed of light, of course, if you know the frequency, you know the wavelength because it's just the speed of light divided by the frequency or the speed of light divided by the wavelength gives you the frequency. So our base graph here. I'm going to slide this over. Do that right. Yeah. Okay, so our base graph. If I do y equals sine of x or sine of theta, however you want to do it, is what we just had. you guys do anything with manipulating the waves? Okay. So what if I change it to y equals 3 sine x? What does that change? Well, my table, if I have y, I'm going to do x. That's exactly what it does. And why? At 90 degrees, y was 1. Well, if it's 3 times sine x, so now it's going to be 3, right? At 180, it was 0, but now it's going to be 3 times that, so it's going to be still 0. At 270, it was negative 1. What's 3 times that? Negative 3. At 360, it was 0. It's 3 times that is still 0. 450, what's it going to be now with 3 sine x? Positive 3. At 540, 0. At 630, negative 3. And at 720, is it 0? 
So you're absolutely right, Andrew. All it does is changes the amplitude. A standard sine wave has an amplitude of 1. This number in front of it changes the amplitude. You can think of this one as being 1 times the sine of x. So that's why it has an amplitude of 1. The number in front of the x changes the amplitude. What if I do y equals the sine of 2x? Well, now, the wavelength, yes. What happens here is 90 degrees is going to behave like 2 times 90, or 180, right? So normally it wouldn't get back to 0 till 180. Now it's back to 0 at 90. 45 degrees, well, 2 times 45 is 90. So at 45 degrees, it's actually up at 1, where it would be at 90 degrees. Does that make sense? 180 is going to behave like 360. So what happens Technically, what this 2 does is it doubles the frequency. We tend to not talk about frequency when we graph. So what it does is it takes the wavelength, the standard wavelength is 360 degrees. And it takes that wavelength and divides it by that number. If that's a 2, the wavelength now becomes 180. So if I had y equals sine of 4x, what do you think the wavelength is going to be? 360 divided by 4 is 90, yes. So a complete wave is going to occur in 90 degrees. Like that. Make sense? The more difficult one to deal with is the shift. Pretend that doesn't look all messed up. That, of course, is still y equals sine x. If I have y equals sine of x plus 90 degrees, what that means, that plus, means that 0 degrees now behaves like 0 plus 90 is 90 degrees. So at 0 degrees, I'm going to have the same value I would at 90. It's going to be here. 90 degrees, well, what's 90 plus 90? 180. So 90 degrees behaves like 180 degrees does. Everything shifts over 90 degrees. Like that. This is referred to as a positive 90 degree phase shift. The easiest way for me to think about it is that's where it starts. Instead of starting at zero, it starts at 90 degrees. So I can just cut the graph off at 90. That black line now is this graph. The graph starts at 90 instead of starting at zero. Of course, you'd have to relabel this. This actually is zero and 90 and whatever. 
Does that make sense? If I want to figure out what, well, let me let me just do an example here. So let's let's graph y equals sine. Well, let's make it a little more interesting. Y equals two times the sine of x minus one hundred eighty. Now that minus means we are starting at negative 180. So this is 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. 1, 2, 1, 2. This is a 2 here, so that means my amplitude is 2. So I'm going to do my standard sine wave first with my amplitude of 2. There's my standard sine wave. But to get my phase shift of negative 180, that means I actually have to go back this way, 180 degrees. And I actually have to start from there. We're going backwards, it would go something like that. So what that means is instead of starting here, my axis has to start there. And then I have to relabel each of those. Zero degrees. I can solve it. X minus 180 equals zero. How would I solve that for X? I add 180. So zero degrees here now becomes 180 degrees. Does that make sense? 90 degrees, well, x minus 180 equals 90 degrees. I add 180 to it. x equals 270. 90 degrees here now becomes 270 degrees, and so on. This is actually going to be a positive 90, and this is going to be 0 if I did that. So the key to figuring these out is to deal with the phase shift first. Now here I can throw the amplitude in with the phase shift. It doesn't mess anything up. But if I throw a change in the wavelength or frequency in with a phase shift, it gets really ugly. Let's say I give you y equals, I'm going to leave the amplitude off for now, sine of 2x, and I'm going to put this in as positive, plus 90 degrees. Well, the first thing I know here is the 2x means what? Not the amplitude, the, two, the amplitude would be in front of the sign. What the 2x means is there are two cycles every 180 degrees, right? Or not 180, two cycles every 360. Standard sine wave. It's going to go like this again. That's our standard sine wave. The 2 here means that in 360, instead of having one cycle in 360, we're going to have Two cycles. Now we have to figure out the wavelength. The wavelength is 360 divided by that number. It's 180 degrees. So a single wave is going to occur in 180 degrees. So what this number is telling us is the number 
of cycles or a number of waves in 360 degrees. Since that's a two, there's two waves in 360. So 360 divided by two means each wave is 180 degrees long. So let's do that next. So we've got to redraw it. So there's two waves in 360 degrees. So that purple is where we're at. Now we still have to do the phase shift. The problem is you know, the amplitude, if I had a number up here, it doesn't interfere with the phase shift. But this number does interfere with the phase shift. So I want to figure out what does zero degrees behave like. So 2x plus 90 is that angle in there. I set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 90. Got 2x equals negative 90. And then I'm going to divide by 2. x equals negative 45. So 0 actually behaves like negative 45, somewhere back in here. If I want to know what 0 degrees would be in this cycle, now here I wanted to know what the 0 would behave like, the 0 on my new one. So this would be the new 0 after the shift. If I want to know what the old zero is, oops, there you go. be careful here. This would be the old zero before the shift. So this zero is behaving like 45 degrees. If I want to know what the new zero would behave like, I put the zero in for x. So 2 times 0 plus 90. Well, 2 times 0 is 0. That's going to be 90 degrees. So this zero is going to be at the 90 degree point. Well, zero behaves like 90 degrees on the regular wave. Remember, this is 90 degrees on the regular wave. So that's why it's tricky. I prefer to do it this way. What this is saying is now after all this, I just shift my, my zero axis here over to negative 45. And that gives me my graph. If I extend this back, it's right here. So that purple line now, this is now a zero. This would now be 90. See, what this is telling me is I subtract 45 from each of these points on the regular graph. Does that make any sense? Let's graph this out. Let's do another one, actually. Let's do y equals 2 sine 3x plus 45. So first of all, what's our amplitude? 2. So here's 1, 2. Negative 1, negative 2. What's our wavelength? One hundred twenty. This number determines our wavelength. 360 divided by that number is our wavelength of 120. So that means is a full cycle in 120. So let's go 30, 60, 90, 120. So I'm going to draw this in now. So 120 would be a full cycle back to zero. So what I usually do is I do this. This is my full cycle. I go halfway, which would be what? 60. So it's going to be at zero at those two points. I know I make this wave, right? If I go half of 60, that's going to be my peak. So right there at 30 is my peak. 
Halfway between 60 and 120 is 90. That's my trough. So there's my wave. So I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to pause there. Does that all make sense? Okay. Now I'm going to do this. 3x plus 45 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 45. 3x equals negative 45. And I'm going to divide by 3. x equals negative 15. So my real phase shift here is negative, it's really a 15 degree phase shift. But what I can do is just subtract 15 from each of these. So 0 becomes negative 15, 30 becomes 15, 60 becomes 45, 90 becomes 75, 120 becomes 105. This is just telling me I subtract 15 from each of these. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, to make it just a touch more confusing, we all know that's what I do here. <laughs> Are we done yet? Holy crap, we got 20 minutes left. Huh? <laughs> You're just waiting to see, is this, is this the worst one yet, or is there more to go? This one I really am trying to break into it slowly. This is just a tough one to visualize. It's, it's all about visualization. It's really about sliding stuff on the graph. In fact, I'll show you a little trick here if you guys are good with computers. So this one here... Amplitude's, what is the amplitude here? What's that mean? Yeah, it's, it's a 3. It's always positive. It's going to be an amplitude of 3, but the negative 3 means we're going to take this thing and we're going to, it's going to be 3 and negative 3, but it's going to be, the negative means it's, flipped over upside down in other words so let me do 90 180 70 60 450 so instead of going well let me let me draw in the Standard sine wave here. So it'd be like this. And I'm doing the positive. I did put in the amplitude at three though instead of just one. But the fact that that's negative three means that it does have to flip over. It's going to be exactly upside down. So it's going to have to go like this. So the blue is what we're looking at with the negative 3. Now what's the 2 tell me? So 360 divided by 2, the whole cycle gets completed in 180 degrees. So instead of here, it's going to be here. So I'm going to shorten this up. So there. And there. Oops, like that. So there's two cycles in 360 degrees instead of just one. 
Now we got to do the phase shift. 2x minus 90 equals 0. We'll add 90. So 2x equals 90. Then what? Divide by 2, x equals 45. That's a positive 45, which means I add 45 to every one. This here is not 0, it's really 45. This is really 135. This is really 225. This is really 315. This is really 405, and so on. Does that make sense? Kind of? If you go to the Excel, Excel can do some of this for you. Take this up to 360. Unfortunately, we got to do a conversion here. Because Excel thinks in radians, not degrees. Unfortunately, no, you cannot. So what all I did is I put in here, I put radians in here to convert this degrees into radians before it calculates it. If I want to graph this, come on now. Uh, Why is 360 not zero? This is just round off in there. Conversion, it looks like. You can go to insert, line graph. That's certainly not what I was looking for. I want a scatter plot. That's what I want. There we go. Scatter plot. There it is. So you can get the sign. Looks like that. Now if you want to change things like. Uh, You know, 4 sine 3x minus 90. But you have to do this. Equals 4 times the sine of radians 3x minus 90. Oops. You gotta be kidding me. It won't let you do negatives, will it? That's cheesy. Now let's see what happens. We'll try that again. Equals. So I'm not going to do it.
Ah. Anyway. I'll let you guys play around with that if you want to. There's a reason why I don't play with it much, because it doesn't. It's kind of a pain, because that conversion from degrees to radians, it's really a pain. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to give you a packet. In this packet, I want you to start out with page 363 to 364. 1 through 23, the odds. We'll discuss those some more tomorrow. Let me get this packet up for you. Okay. So probably, I'll probably call it class when we What I'll probably do is I'll probably give you a quiz tomorrow to take home with you to do on Wednesday. We won't cover it anyway. Since there'll be one out of four of you here. <laughs>